What up, everybody? This is Dom Root here with Travis White, and we're going to talk a little bit about some new ideas he's had brewing. Uh, in particular, we got quest-based reality. So we had a couple of preliminary meetings um, just to chop it up and talk a little bit about it. So this video here in particular, just to kind of elaborate on things and kind of paint that picture in a way that is kind of palatable for the average person to be able to digest and see if this is something that they like to kind of incorporate into their lives. We're going to talk a little bit about how this is going to um, could potentially impact the university and kind of where this all stems from uh, more deeply. So, what up, Trav? How you doing today? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I kind of feel like this idea has been a long time coming. Uh, you know, like a long time ago, I decided like not to do university, and you know, once I was done with college football, and then kind of go off on my own direction, trying to figure out like what are the problems that need to be dealt with um, and how to deal with them. Uh, sounds kind of cliche and like super podcasty, but you know, um, it's kind of the start of this all, right? So I have this idea called quest based reality. Um, and this is like me just going over John Verveke's work and Forrest Landry and this other guy like Matt Siegel. And like those three are like the three primary things I'm listening to and thinking about like a lot of the ideas that I had already pre previously laid out in like our podcast and just like general and talks I've given around like, you know, various places. But, you know, the idea is like, we need these like ecology of practices that allow individuals to integrate themselves into like new ways of being so that we can be able to like address this thing called like the meaning crisis or the meta crisis or the meta meta crisis. It depends on which framework you're looking at, but like, all three of those roughly sum up to like the foundations that we built our civilization on seem to be running dry with their ability to create meaning and happiness and connectedness in individuals lives and that's having like super downstream effects like all the way up to global warming all you know so if we're to address issues like global warming we don't just address them at like let's say the technological level but we're going to address them at the interpersonal level all the way through the technological level so it's going to be state law it's going to be you know national law it's going to be international law it's going to be individuals participating by changing their own behaviors it's going to be participating in cultures that are going to be different than the ones that they were previously participating in and so this idea of quest-based reality i think is a way to like bootstrap that massive change that we have to make to be able to go forth and like like address these problems that are going to become larger and larger and larger at scale right so the well like i've we've played a lot of video games together like me and you dom um damn my little fucking things fucked up but anyway hopefully it'll fix itself in a second um but like we've we played a lot of video games together, and one of like the highlights in a lot of the video games is they have this like leveling system. But like the leveling system is basically um, akin to like my growth through life, right? So when you're going through these quests in any type of video game, um, you're going through some type of like someone predetermined some pathway for you to go to so that you can develop some understanding and skills so that you can further integrate yourself into like a much larger and especially in the context of like massively multiplayer online video games um larger and larger communities of individuals who are working for bigger and bigger goals so the idea is you know like the way i've been talking about it like on the streets or with the average person is you know like this like well we what i want to do is i want to get the university to become like some of them not all of them some of them should be advanced but they should become beginning quest hubs you know anybody should be able to walk off the street into that place and start the quest lines that are available at the university so i'd like to like turn the university students away from you know being like just students to quest givers so everybody's kind of a teacher and a student at the same time right i think that's the big value of what quest based reality is going to be able to give to us like just trying to sum up the like a little introduction real quick so we can have a back and forth right um that you know 
as we change our mode of being from the mode of being that we have today, which I don't know how to name it, you know, to this quest based mode of being, then we'll be able to integrate all of the institutions that we have in a much deeper way. And that kind of way looks like someone walking onto a college campus or maybe talking to a robot or talking to like, you know, somebody and they would like, oh yeah, go to this bar down the street, go to the bar down the street, you know, they're supposed to get the blue coin from the bar. They go to the bar. They try, you know, ask for the blue coin. Everybody kind of shuns them because everybody working at the bar also works at the university. It's kind of what they do back and forth part time. But, you know, as their quest givers at the bar, you know, they can go and evaluate these individuals along the lines that we would want this individual to have just to be able to start the quest to go bother one of the professors. Right. So they get the blue coin, go back to the university, bother a professor. And he's got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Go talk to this guy. Go talk to that guy. Go talk to that guy. And, you know, eventually this individual is able to complete the quest and, you know, we can kind of go from there. So that's just the overall gist of the beginning of the idea. Like, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. And so at the beginning, you mentioned three guys, right, that kind of helped kick things off or some individuals that kind of kind of inspired you to kind of lead in this direction or at least you've been listening to their lectures or kind of engaging with their content. For the folks that don't know, like the John Vervakis and so on, like what what about them? Like, who are they, you know, for the people that don't know and like what makes kind of the work that they do important enough to inspire you to go in this direction? Yeah. Um, starting with let's just say like John Verveke. John Verveke undergirds a lot of, like I use him to undergird a lot of my arguments and not just him, but there's like a whole like legacy around him right now that there's a lot of good science in the direction of meaning and embeddedness in communities of practice that are aimed at the development of the individual, right? Regardless of you know, making claims of what the development of the individual could possibly be in the end run, right? We've seen that there's indications that individuals walking away from like, let's say an apartment by themselves where they don't interact with anybody and embedding themselves in a group of practices, whether it be a church or a, a roller rink group, you know, like you're doing like extreme roller skating, you know, like all of that, walking away from individuality, not necessarily individuality, but like loneliness towards groups are gonna give you better meaning, better like value for your life. You're gonna be happier. You're gonna be a lot healthier, especially when those groups also start reciprocating, like, like not reciprocating, but like also becoming healthier because the individuals are becoming healthier. So as everybody starts integrating in a much like deeper way, the whole thing kind of becomes dynamical. It starts living, it starts moving. And in that, individuals have a much broader depth for being. So like they just integrate themselves deeper than we are right now. Like, so that John Verveke would under, like he, he would be able to like, you can use a lot of his work to make the argument that what we should be doing with our society would be creating something like quest lines. Um, even in his most recent talk, um, I can't remember the exact title of it, but um, he, he defined all this stuff for like 45 minutes and he goes, and that's what a quest is. And then I was just like, boom, look, here we are. Like I, it, it's, as, it, it's as clean as a metaphor as I'm saying, using John Verveke to say, quests are the way that we should start integrating ourselves together so um yeah so that's the first one uh the second one's forrest landry um his work's way more technical and harder to describe but the main thing that i pull from him with this particular thing is be like his ethics of choice um there's something about like his mode of ethics that i enjoy way better than a lot of things that a lot of people have to say, right? So his roughly, I would sum up, would be like, what ethics could I have if I was gonna go travel the multiverse, right? Like, let's say I wanna go to any possible universe and I want to be accepted there as valuable, right? The thing that I could do in all of those universes that seems to take me the furthest would be increase the amount of choices that universe can make by my presence. And the more choice I could bring to that universe, the better my presence could possibly be. 
and that's possibly could be you know it's not like i'm gonna just go bring more choice and it's always gonna be better but in a in a way the opposite of slavery right where i'm dominating you and i'm dominating your choices would be i'm giving you more choices you know and obviously that could be gamed in some way you know i give you so many choices in such a way that i'm limiting your choices but you know if it's playing clean you know if your choices increase you're a more freer more free person um and then matt siegel he like his is also a little bit more technical he uses process thought from whitehead to talk about problems with the assumptions of the modern scientific par materials paradigm right and that you know sounds like a bunch of catchphrases but essentially you know as we did our science we made certain assumptions about reality and ourselves and those informed and guided our policy decisions all the way up to like the un level you know and if we're gonna try to do something like global warming we're gonna have to have different assumptions about what we are so there's this like ontological epistemological metaphysics um connection that forest landry addresses this in a deep way and john bravicki addresses in this deep way but it's the process thought at the forefront that you know i like matt siegel's kind of like for me here's a deep connection between the way that he's thinking and the way that i was thinking reading the same things and i find us to be roughly the same age um so it you know it just validates a lot of the a lot of the stuff that he says validates a lot of my intuition having read whitehead and coming from like a stuart kaufman self-organization process type thought in the first place so each one of those people like relate to quest based reality in the sense that like as we're trying to increase our choices and understand the choices that we could possibly make we're going to have to develop processes that increase those types of choices and the types of processes that we want to use to increase those types of processes are going to be the type of processes that increase individuals feeling of connectedness and togetherness in relationship to their own meaning making devices right there's like these intrinsic meaning making devices each one of us have and that would be in relationship to the communities and the world they find themselves embedded in right and i think that if we can get quest-based reality to be as seen as wide and far as possible it covers all of those things so that we can actually have a program versus just a prescription, right? And so while all of them are able to prescribe, the underlying problem, quest-based reality, seems to be the synthesis of all that in like a way where we can actually like start building something using all of those ideas as like the underlying mechanics or the underlying uh, epistemological groundings. Got you. Okay. And and maybe you you know you might believe we need to lay some more context, but I was just gonna try to go for an example here mm -hmm. and and see like what kind of applications that you know quest based reality could kind of be I guess applications apply would be the wrong thing, but how can the average person yeah, yeah, use yeah. it, right? So say we have Brody and Samantha, right? They are falling in love. You know, how can mm -hmm. these two utilize quest based reality to like get to the next level of their love or would there need to be a third party or like you know what how, how could they kind of engage with this and apply it to their lives yeah with all of these answers there's going to be two parts right one my own musings on it right and when i can think about it and then two we're, I, it would be nice to have large integrated communities of ecology of practices that kind of define what that means for themselves right but roughly what that would look like in that case then would be each one of them are capable of giving each other quests and you know that you're not able to get the reward without the, fulfilling the quest, you know what I mean? Without cheating in some way. So like, you know, we're already kind of want that with our relationships you know that's what the whole dating phase is or the talking phase or whatever right but it's not a it's not fully respected that i want you to accomplish and do x y z elemental p before i'm going to give you any particular experience points not even just like a reward you might just get experience points for that and i want you to have like five thousand personal experience points before i'm willing to trust you as something that's valuable to you know let's say my choice intrinsic right like how i decide to choose the choices that i make right like i don't want you to come corrupt that for some reason so or whatever possible reason we can go it just seems like you know if if uh you know i'm just going to use 
the uh, gender binary example, right? But like if a girl wants a boy to like her or, you know, if she wants to have sex with him, it should be clear under the assumption that she's able to give him quests and he's able, he has to complete those quests to her liking before any particular engagement happens at any other level. Right. And that's almost pretty much how our world is. Right. Like we already have this assumption. So, you know, like another part of like the inspiration from this is just sitting back and watching the world and letting myself grow as a being. Right. And seeing what people need, you know, like by actually being there with people. You know, that's part of why I joined I Am Ruko versus like any other path. I wanted to be, you know, at that intersection where I can kind of watch all the people pass by. You know, that's why I am live where I live, you know, so I could just, you know, like, it's weird, like, you know, your name, I think always has something to do with who you are. And like, right now, it kind of makes sense, right? So like Travis and um, Clayton, it's like Travis means to traverse or like crossroads. And then Clayton means like a house. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a house at the crossroads. So that's kind of, you know, my, my big being, right? Like for the longest time, I've just been sitting here watching people serving them up beers and weed as they kind of cross through asking them questions and really figuring out what's like what everybody needs on their journey right and i think what everybody needs on their journey is a good sense of direction and i think that quest-based reality actually gives the soul a direction it gives you a reason to want to go travel the world or go embed yourself in this community or go talk to somebody or or go to try to integrate yourself into a local bar and see if you can find to make connections enough to get a blue coin so that you can maybe go to the university and get like the fuck it just make it simple the free car <laughs> just for getting mm -hmm. the blue coin you know it could be as simple as you know the items that like we want to have going forward a lot of the basic needs individuals can go through is you can just acquire them through doing quests you know like all these conservatives are like yeah you know they ain't they so i'm not going to make any voices um because i'm not trying to like alienate or belittle anybody through comedy anymore you know mm -hmm. it's just like well because like it, it, it's in quest-based reality right i don't have any oppositional groups like like let's like let's, let's use white supremacy as an example right i no longer care about race and fixing that particular problem and i want to set up a city where there's all white people trying to do a white thing mm -hmm. because in quest-based reality if we're set up that way then all i need to do is send one of my guys my friends in there have them complete the quest and they tell me what the fuck's going on mm -hmm. right you know it, it, uh, it, and if there's enough of us and that group's small enough, it, the infiltration that way is super easy. So let's see if it's sustainable. You know, like I've always been a big like, you know, go make your team, go make my team. You know what I mean? As long as the rules are fair, like let's see who can play better ball. You know, like mm -hmm. that's always fair. Um, you know, as long as it's not violent or anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So just curious, like on that topic too, like wow, and to some it may come off obvious, you know, and again we've had previous conversations so mm -hmm. i'm also throwing these questions out there more so for the yeah, sake yeah. of the video and not so much for my personal uh need for the answer but like <clears throat> in your opinion how is this like if we take the dating thing for example it does kind of exist in a way where a guy takes uh you know guy or girl takes you know person on date they you know show them that they're a decent person a little bit of chivalry you know you go through these steps with the person then you get to hang out more you get more access to their life you kind of grow and evolve so how is like quest-based reality like not better but like different or you know more necessary for like our society even if it's not the dating thing like you know because in a way like if it's the dating or if it's even a fraternity you know you have kind of quests you know mm -hmm. where you have to do some things to get into this group uh, so for quest-based reality, how is that slightly different or an enhancement to what we're already doing? Yeah, like so like, let's say like there's like a, an argument that there's like a lack of religion or spirituality or something like that, right? Like people feel like we're not integrated in the same way that we might have been a couple thousand years ago with like, you know, the pyramids and, you know, being able to jump on a donkey and go to the next village or whatever, right? That's all quest-based reality. Like the entire theological enterprise up until now including now and this offer to do quest based reality is always been a theological enterprise right like what would be the point of the like look like put yourself in the bible like thousands of years ago right before the bible was created but you wanted to find out the mystery of jesus 
Yeah, you're in one village, you hear like part of the story, you go to this other village, you're part of the story, right? Like it took 300 years for them to make a book about it, right? And even that book seems to be like an encoded version of quest-based reality, right? You gotta go do all these things in reality, you gotta like actually pray, you gotta go do this, you gotta go to church, you gotta, like all these things are prescriptions of things that like once you do them, then you get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into reality, but that promise to get deeper information or a better integration in reality is a quest. Mm -hmm. Like 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 look at all, like and, and our quest lines and our quest cities, right? This is like something that we haven't touched on yet is like, you know, like there should be fashion city, dude. Like, you know, fashion city is the same thing as Christianity city. Like you go to these places and you go through these deep quest lines that are as deep as something like the bringing Jesus to 2023, right? And that type of quest is something that helped un like build our civilization, help like bring the stability to our civilization. And I don't think it's so much the, um, the, the church or those symbols, but we can build our own symbols through understanding theology as a quest-based game. Got you. Okay. And then, so or at least we were, even the tent. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I got you. And so, looking at our timer here, we have about four minutes on this one, so we do part yeah, yeah, one, yeah. part two. So for you know, I guess the remainder of like part one. Uh, in the very beginning, you mentioned like the meta crisis, and. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to talk a little bit about like, you know, kind of, all right, now taking this and like evolving your concept into something larger and like, you know, we can get into the university and everything like that. But with the, the meta crisis, do you mind like elaborating a little bit more on that? Yeah. Yeah. The meta crisis is like, all right. Um, the oceans are polluted to such a degree that, uh, we're having a problem with like, let's say supply chain management of fish that doesn't have plastics in it, right? Okay, like that's problem one, okay? Let's look at another problem. Let's go with global warming, right? Industrial uh, gases are causing an intrinsic change in the overall dynamical patterns of Earth's um, weather away from what would have happened if we weren't here, right? So global warming or global climate change right um let's go with another one uh the rise of fascism in europe and the united states um putin's violence right that type of like integration in the 21st century where we're integrating in a way where we're hostile towards others and there's a willingness for violence um let's go with like the uh identity issue in the United States of America um, in relationship to, I would say about everything, right? Republicans don't know how to be Republicans as much as everybody else is trying to figure out what it means to be themselves. Um, so all of those things have intrinsic commonalities, right? Then the commonalities are that, well, one, we have this thing called the internet so that we're all drawing from similar inspiration and images the internet's gone back as far as radio in that particular sense where we're able to have like a broadcast where enough people can like synchronize their mode of being to that broadcast so that they can start changing the way that they move given that broadcast existence right so that change in all of our pattern of behavior over the last 120 years has gotten us into these types of modes of being that when we go in the laboratory and ask questions towards ourselves, like how do I feel about where I'm at or how do I feel about the direction of things? I'm not getting good answers in any direction. Like how do I feel about global warming or how do I feel about the food? So all of the negativity that can be drawn from our like almost alienation from the world that we built from ourselves, right, is the meta crisis and it's that that meta crisis that's causing the the deep feeling that this might be the end of times at least for our group of individuals you know what i mean but it, the feeling of end of times is something that i see pop up in the like time all the time so it's like a uh almost a quest if you so choose to accept it you know you've got this feeling in your heart the end of times like, how would you participate in the world if the end of times were coming, but you could participate in it 
and prevent it, right? So maybe there's a change in your mode of being that needs to be made and the universe itself is presenting some type of quest, right? And then, you know, so, yeah. Got you. So, and so it kind of seems like it's a, a new mindset that people would have to adopt, you know, in terms of like, making things better like you know working yeah. towards some kind of level of progression and since the university has i don't know it's one of the leading you know methods of like training up the new generation of people and how they think and how they approach life um in this next section we can go into a little more about how the university can adopt quest-based reality and kind of talk a little more about how that impression on the next generation could kind of impact the success of this and we can see it being used in more spaces yeah, yeah, I think that's the launching point for quest-based reality. It would be like, you know, if we can get a couple of universities to just even understand this, then we've already done the base work to change the world that way. Like we have a new way of being. Absolutely. So yeah, you know, in the first part, we were talking a little bit about how you know quest-based reality kind of you can see it existing in the university because the university is kind of one of the first places people go to kind of develop the mind. You know though a lot of people change their majors but like there is the place that you know most people go from a child to an adult or they kind of formulate their opinions about life or you know kind of what the next step is in life for them and then those people go on to be the doctors the engineers the producers of like the content that many people consume a lot of people do it without going to the university of course but they're um, based on how you know our world is set up like a lot of people are piling into the universities to get that degree you know multi levels of degrees and then go out into the world and kind of impart change so for you in your opinion like how do you see quest based reality kind of elevating like the university you know we know what it is currently and kind of how people go into it the classes they take and so on but how can quest based reality kind of make the universities like intentions or like you know what the university is supposed to be doing for people how can that uh kind of impact that part of it knowing that we have the meta crisis to address when it comes to like you know our mindset towards you know kind of putting the individual over humanity and kind of flipping that and kind of making humanity like the the kind of the center point for us as individuals though you know we are who we are we still have to take into consideration like this earth is only going to be here uh, as long as we treat it right, you know, if you will, or, you know, we're only going to be on the earth as long as we can treat it right so that it can sustain us. Um, how can quest based reality kind of help the university do a better job, but also like help us kind of shift that mindset as well? Yeah, yeah. Just to take language from John Ravakey, uh The university is a propositional tyrant and they've, uh, you know, it, there's just there's more ways of knowing and more ways of integrating knowledge and being than just sentences and the structures that they could make and all of the little rules that we can play with those sentences and, and how well someone might be at deploying a sentence in a very restricted social sense with asymmetric power, you know, like yeah. it's all that, right? So if we want to have like some type of additional, I'm not saying get rid of anything the university is doing right now, but if we want to have, let's say, participatory knowledge or procedural knowledge or uh, prop or uh, perspectival knowledge take front, right, where individuals matter, right? Like, let's say I've gone through, I personally have gone through something and it matters that I've gone through that, right? Then we get to this place where we can have the quest based mindset integrate the propositional in such a way that it actually becomes these other types of knowledge right by having the individual take this knowledge in you know in the propositional way right the way that we are educating now but then have them turn around and try to produce their being the other directions right then we're able to have like these quest givers that understand what the goal is, right? Like, let's, we don't want to have, a, I don't want to go take a quest where I do the whole quest and I, you know, I go from here and then I go to Chuck E. Cheese. And then by the time I get to Chuck E. Cheese, uh, you know, no one knew what was going on there because the person who set it up wasn't that good of a person, you know, like they didn't know how to set it up. So the university can already kind of 
educate the individual all the way up to the level I would think would be a proficient quest giver, where they can go out into the city, into the world, and start making these strings from the educational practices of the university into the daily lives of the individuals who live within that city or that community or that, you know, whatever big the quest line would be, you know. So I, I see it as allowing the university to take all of the knowledge that they developed and reintegrate themselves into the world in such a way that they start providing that knowledge to the individuals by inviting the world to come participate in games, essentially, that we've created so that people can develop themselves. Like it's just like taking video games or taking uh, what I call what I call them digital alternative realities, like their way like video game doesn't even get closed <laughs> you know what i mean you've seen some of the games i've played you know yeah. like it's crazy what's going on in there um but uh you know it, it's taking serious let's say use the the modes of being that the computer's been able to allow us to hypothesize could exist you know world of warcraft's a, a mode of being that is a hypothesis it's a whole reality into which you know in that reality the mode of being or the development of being is based in quests mm. go do this quest go do that quest go do this quest right and so if we brought that to our universe or start that in our universe that allows the university to like build these deep quest lines that individuals can go on by themselves or in groups or as in cities or as in nations so that by the time they're done with that quest line they're able to and this gets back to like the meta crisis right tackle the actual problems that are ahead of us or even like we're experiencing right now because if we don't have the modes of being capable of understanding the very intrinsics of the problems then we're never going to be able to actually solve it we can't just go and be like "Ooh, humans in their form right now without any training are instinctually capable of handling the problems that's wrong if we need some type of participation in the knowledge sets that we've developed so that we can actually like see what being looks like versus like hallucinating what being could look like or hypothesizing what being would look like, which would be like a hallucination without colors. Mm. Okay. And maybe for the person sitting here or, you know, kind of watching this and they're like, yo, are they, are they saying that we should like, you know, kind of redo the whole university format and everything should be quest. Is this something that we're trying to reformat what's going on? Or is this in addition to like, all right, you know, you're getting your law degree, but now you're a specialist in this type of law because you followed the quest line in addition to pursuing whatever coursework you had to pursue. Yeah. I, I see, I see it becoming something else way down the road. Mm -hmm. So at, at first it becomes like, students are going to school like they are right now and then we kind of like i don't know get them to build quest lines like and i i see individuals being super good at it i see groups of people being super good at it so it's gonna kind of like dynamically evolve right it's not like i can like make a full guess about like how this is gonna go but i see it happening where the university would be essentially quest hubs like you know if i wanted to have like a game that was like open world sandbox place i would want to kind of always build this place where everybody no matter how far out they explored can always come back to and like maybe trade some of the things they did or you know maybe there's a new quest line that's like important for this person who's supposed to be important you know and like anybody yeah. who solves it there's like a big reward for it and everybody's trying to tackle that i could see the universities becoming those zones where you know individuals are living a war like a life that people are you know they value their information and value the knowledge that they have but they are also individuals who are valuable who are taking quests themselves you know it's not they're just their quest givers they're quest takers and so maybe you're going to the university and you the reason why you become a student is because that's the quest yeah. right like you know <laughs> and by the time you just completed a normal degree then you can go to the business place nice. you know and like okay. yeah so, so yeah you know, so for our, like our democratic process, right, you know, do you feel as though the people that get elected, uh, you know, underneath this, 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 this conversation we're in right now, should they be some of the best quest takers uh, yes. you know, of our time? You know, if we're going to elect a president or a city councilman or a mayor or whatever the case may be, like this person should be someone that's, you know, 
kind of up there in terms of when you go to the scoreboard, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, oh man, this person did X, Y, and Z in this community and that community. So they're, you know, they're going on and they're giving their talks about what kind of changes they're going to implement. But then you look at their score and it's like, bro, you haven't even, you know, engaged with this community in any capacity, you know, in terms of quests yes. are concerned. Yes. That, that uh, you, you're, I don't have anything else to say other than yes. That is, if, if we can get to that place there, that is a win for our civilization. Okay. No, yeah. For sure. Flat, flat out. Like if, if, if it becomes where, you know, like, yeah, that's it. Flat out. Okay. No, and I like that, man. I think it's, I think it's good because again, if we have that, let's say the community creates the, the quest, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. like, yo, this, this group of people, however they got formed, you know, this is the community. Right. And we hear it all the time where people kind of, uh, pander towards a certain group of people like yeah i want to get these people some rights or i want to do this for this yes. group of people right and then they get elected and none of that ever happens because of whatever's going on it's always something but it's like to say that you know at least we know this person has gone through x amount of quests right and they learn mm -hmm. kind of the struggle of this group of people and kind of the things that they're enduring and they got to see it from their eyes maybe that person is kind of better suited to know how to approach that or at least like the fact that they didn't get it done there's not a whole bunch of conspiracy around oh they're just trying to tell us one thing just to get our vote you know and then go into office and do another thing at least this person went through whatever sets of things we wanted them to go through you know what i'm saying in order to like show us like hey they're invested in this community they may not be from the community but they at least went through some of our quests and got an understanding of the things that we're enduring so that you know when they are in power obviously they have a long list of things to do but they know like hey i, I, I work very closely with this group you know and at the very least, like when something does come to my desk that I can sign off on or we can work to kind of bring about a solution for this group, you know, I'm suited to do so. Yeah, the deep intimacy that's going to be available between the like constituents and their leaders uh, in quest based reality, I think, is the thing that I care about the absolute most. You know, like succession is like that thing that I think that makes the United States special, right? Like, like the one thing I can say that we got a million hundred percent right is to like make sure that we pass down leadership every four years limit leadership as much as possible but still have strong motherfucking leadership you know but you know it's that kind of like it's that corruption thing you know by having strong succession principles you can avoid corruption in the, in the longer run right mm -hmm. yeah and so um by having individuals who go to Alabama and complete the Alabama state quest line, right? And that gets them more votes than our current mode of being is the whole fucking point. Mm -hmm. For is sure. the whole fucking point. Like exactly. there is no other fucking point. No, and that's real because a lot of you know, <laughs> folks can go up there and say anything, you know, it's like then we're picking yeah. a person with the best speech or, yeah. you know, and there's like, because sometimes when people are going to vote for certain things and this is, you know, obviously a different issue, but like, at times people don't know who to vote for right you know yes. you know the, in the primaries you know president you know some of the big ones but then you get a list of people to circle or you know fill in the bubble for and you have no idea what they're really about so you go on to google and you try to look up some things about what policies they say they support yeah, and so at on. the last minute too yeah you know but at least like with this <laughs> whole gamification of it all where you're like yo you can actually look at this person's score you know they completed x yes. amount of quests right <laughs> yeah, and yeah that's verifiable versus you know hey here's a paragraph they typed up and posted on their website which you don't know if they actually hold that to be true or for no, something that gpt you can't trust that yeah right. if it's a paragraph on a website that's not him not yeah, anymore absolutely. bro yeah. not anymore yeah. Or yeah, even yeah. a video of them talking, you know, you can't, you can try to judge the person by looking at their face and saying, do they look authentic in what they're saying? Yeah, yeah. Do they seem like they genuinely care about the concerns nope. of this group versus yeah, yeah. looking at their track record? Not to interrupt, but like, again, not with chat GPT, bro. Like in the future, we're not going to be able to trust the images that much. So there has to, and this is, this is the, the, the meta thing this solves is how to use the AI correctly right is if we want to have the alignment problem the ai is there as a quest and trends like it's helping us guide our quests if we can get it to understand what a quest is in relationship to itself here's a quest try to make sure life can get to the end of the universe 
<laughs> right? And, you know, give it as much choice as possible, then I think that we can actually do like all of this the correct way. But, you know, getting back to what you were exactly saying, like the the ability for me to look at somebody's life's work actually right using like we can use blockchain you know you complete the quest the guy who's like the trusted quest guy or you know you get the points from somehow there's a way to work it in you know just a badge on the blockchain <laughs> you have more quest lines you complete more badges da, 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 da. you can look anybody up at any time but but like like we were pointing like let's say we have a guy who went to the did the new york quest line the New York City quest line, they did the Los Angeles City quest line and a San Francisco quest line versus the guy who went and grinded all the small city quest lines and got like some of the bigger cities in other places that were near where the small cities were. Who who would you want to vote for? You know, who's who more cares about the small city when they say they care? Mm, yeah. 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 Well, why would you go grind these all out just to not give a fuck at the end? You know what I mean? That's cool. It's a better show. Like, at least I was betrayed because I trusted the quest versus I just got betrayed. <laughs> you know, this he was a shifty guy. But at least some level, as he's going through all these experiences, at that moment of betrayal, at least we know he knew us or they knew us. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the individual who did it knew us, you know? So it, it, it's, it, it's a deeper reality than just having Donald Trump not give a fuck from a distance. You know, Donald Trump was the number one quest taker on earth and he done has the most quest points and grinded out the most, then that makes sense. It, you know? And he in a way he has. In a way there needs to be a Donald Trump quest line, bro. I'd take a Donald Trump quest line. I don't know like why wouldn't you? If anything, to just take the power that he had for yourself. You know what I mean? It's like diffusing power. Mm. Like if Putin had a quest line, you know what I mean? Maybe he wouldn't have a war. Mm. So, and and on on that not necessarily on that topic, but like still on the quest based reality, we probably brushed over it, but I kind of want to circle back a little bit and kind of focus a little bit on the individual because you know a lot of people are selfish um, and they're just like, yo, how does this how does it, how does this impact my life? You know, so how could a person that's wanting to be a better person, you know, essentially benefit from quest based reality? If it's hey, I want to be eat more healthier or if I want to get more fit or if I want to, you know, read more. Yeah. It's, um, like, I, it's almost it's like self-explanatory, like the way you asked the question, right? Yeah. Like if I can give myself quests, like the best possible relationship you can have with yourself would be a quest based self. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, all right. I, I need to get this amount of experience points. You know, you can figure roughly factor all these in your head, like how much, will it take me to be able to do a one and a half off of a diving board, like a, a one and a half dive, right? Okay, I can look at myself from here to there and say, okay, I can, you can start actually using your mind to map out how to go from one state of being to another state of being, I think appropriately. Like, and this would be without the least amount of like theological baggage, right like let's just say that there's this introspective ability that even meditation wants you to have that they've been trying to give us from the beginning right in all of these like it's the beginning of magic is bootstrapping this like ability to like look at myself in the world and manage my own being from like a first person like a deeper first person perspective like a first person's perspective without looking at my eyes right but like this like first person perspective on myself right mm -hmm. and so quest based reality seems to be the way that you grow up right like so like let's say i gotta learn how to walk and then i gotta learn how to use my hands while walking you know what i mean eventually i become like a teenager and then i've got to learn how to fall in love and then i gotta learn this and i learn well the whole way of my being is so close to what a quest is already that it seems like this quest thing is a lot deeper like you know we go all the way back like well what, what did king arthur give people right quests mm -hmm. <laughs> right so maybe it's as deep as you know some of the like jungian archetypes that that humans need quests to develop their own being like like look, look what do you do when you send your kid to college what are you hoping right you're hoping that they go there and there's enough activities it's like almost describing what i'm saying quest-based reality would be mm -hmm. without with just a hope and a prayer 
this puts a label on it in a way that allows us to actually start, like, let's say, utilizing some of these things from John Verveke, from Forrest Landry, from processed thoughts, and start building a world around that so that we can actually start asking questions about the like the problems that we have so we can start building quests that allow us to solve them. Because, yeah. like, let's say, like, we want to have a space forge, right? We want to be able to bring an asteroid to Earth so or just... We want to start mining asteroids, right? Well, the best way to get that bootstrapped up, in my opinion, like if we want to actually get that done, put it as a quest. See who wants, like, and each layer of it's a quest. Who's going to be the, the manager of it, right? You know, boom, 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 boom. You know, who's going to be this guy who cowed off of his couch and he always had this idea about how to make that work and how do we get him integrated into this at the same time we got the top engineer in the world and how do we get him into the same room? You know, so that we can actually build things that are at like at the level of civilization where our civilization takes itself serious, that like all the members of it are intrinsically valuable, that each one of them, the way that they decide to go through life, that the path that they choose through life are all individually their own and they all matter. And by just trusting everybody and their mode of being, we can have a healthy civilization. I think quest based reality gets the closest to that without like forcing anything. Okay. And this may be like more for the future, of course. So let's just, you know, put on our futuristic hats here. I'm curious to, to know what you think, like how you think, I guess, accountability for this should look like or would look like where it's like, all right. I know we talked a little bit about the individual, you know, if they give themselves quests, like obviously people will have to then hold themselves accountable. Um, but I'm just kind of in this space right now. What I'm thinking is like accountability and like the risk of like this whole thing you know it's like all right if i subscribe to someone's quest who's to say that quest isn't like janky you know or like corrupted yeah. if you will you know but then again and i also have this other thing on my other shoulder here thinking about all right you know so let's say i want abs or whatever right and i go and i'm just like all right looking at my stomach now i need to do x amount of this per day in order to get to where i want to get for abs you know super basic I idea what because i like again with the invention of like the Apple Watch or the Samsung Watch and stuff like that, people are able to track things, right? You know, you get a little buzz. Oh, you're not, you haven't completed your rings for the day, or you still have X amount more steps to go. Is this something that eventually should be like an application for people to kind of subscribe to, to where they can kind of track their progress? Do you see it best fit in that kind of space? And then if so, you know, what kind of parameters do you think should be involved with that in order to like, kind of have like a level of checks and balances you know to make sure that either you're following things the right way so it is a kind of maybe two or three part kind of thing there but that's kind of where my brain is going right now it's just yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. The... I, I love it yeah yeah uh, like it, it so the answer to the question if you want the ai to fucking do anything let it do that let it watch you and give you experience points because it's going to be fucking watching you anyway it's going to be learning about you. It's going to be studying your pattern behavior. It's going to be making predictive models about what you're going to do and who you're going to be, right? So in quest-based reality, if we're kind enough to ourselves to use the AI in the way, like there's a much deeper conversation we can have about what AI could be done for, right? Um, roughly like like just dropping it, you know? Um, the I have an individual sit in a chair, right? And I have like five feet in front of them, I have a, a line. Right, and I tell them get up and go walk across that line. There's a bodily ability for me to like go and get across that line. And if I can't get across that line, there's something wrong with me, right? Okay, so I hook my brain up to this vast AI that like understands humans greater than I myself, right? Okay, what I can do with that AI is I can have it turn all my sliders off. Like, oh, sorry, if we just treat all the emotions like sliders, right? Anger, happiness, left, right, on, off, right? What I can do is then I can go turn off all my anger and then try to get up out of that chair and walk across the line. So there's a way to move my body no matter how much this thing's messing with me. And I can use it to train me to move my body anywhere I want. But we have to kind of trust that we built it right, you know, because mm -hmm. the same process could train so that to like manipulate me if the process is incomplete of mm -hmm. me using all my sliders, right? Okay, so um, once we have an AI that is aligned, like, because like it's either gonna like that's even deeper, and I'm not gonna get into that part. But it's either gonna collapse our version of reality to such a degree where there's just like one computer in this region, right? 
<laughs> or we're going to get it right and we're going to like be a civilization that goes forth into the universe right mm -hmm. and so the 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 universe like so the answer to the full question if we take serious ai and what it offers and the tools that we've already built like a la snowden then you hook the ai up to the five eyes you know what i mean that we have on earth that are watching everything it can keep track of all of us individually. We're already programming it to do that. You know what I mean? And then we can give individuals the ability to be held accountable the way they want. Like I should have, like my algorithm on YouTube is the same thing as the algorithm that should be watching my behavior and my patterns, right? I should be able to be like, yo, today I want you to change my YouTube so that I'm not watching any garbage videos and I can define what garbage videos are. Give me more ad videos. You know, so all day long, no matter where I go on the internet, it's an ad, ab, it's an ad, ad, abs, ab. Even some of the words and some of the things are like sublingual, like, you know, so, you know, like getting me at that level. It's abs and this, this is, you know, so I can have it fuck with me to become the person I want to be. Mm. And that's a theological AI versus a like domination technological nightmare, mm. right? And yeah. And so then by hooking the AI up the right way, it's the thing that's going to be able to hold us accountable. There's an additional part to the accountability question, right? Like the communities themselves, like we're already doing like uh, the, the community wants to go solve the crime. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, there should be investigators, quest validators. There should be, you know, um, the university should be a part of that process of quest validation, right? There should be corporations out there that are quest validators. Oh, I trust, if it got Apple on it, I fucking trust it. You know, it's the same kind of world we already live in. We can use a lot of the same mechanisms that we already have to go and validate these particular pathways, right? Um, so I think that we, we already have the skills capable of holding ourselves accountable of whether or not some individual has completed, you know, what they've said they've completed. Okay, mm -hmm. no, and I appreciate you kind of elaborating on that because it originally it was kind of like, leading me to uh, it's a video you already have out where you were speaking at the institute of general semantics and you're kind of saying hey with this whole vr thing coming you know we want to be part of the people programming these things because you don't want people to go into vr and come out a shittier person essentially you know um you can obviously kind of paint that picture a little more vividly than i can but generally you know you were kind of getting that message across to people saying how this is something important and the work that you know they do there could definitely be beneficial in a space like this and i feel like it's kind of connected in that way where or at least where i was going with that question is just like quest-based reality is something that is extremely important and if it's going to impact individuals and kind of society at large kind of making sure the right people are at the forefront of this like invention you know what i'm saying to make sure it's off on the right foot and i like how you you know mention that some of the verification processes that we have now could definitely be impacted by that. You know, sometimes when we go on a website and we want to buy something and we haven't been on this website before, but we go to the bottom and we see that little check thing at the bottom and say, like, hey, this this place won't scam you. It's like, all right, cool. I'll go ahead and make my purchase now, you know. Mm -hmm. And similarly, when they see that Apple backs a product or another company backs this product, you're like, all right, cool. I'm more comforted and moving forward with it. So having quest validators or different using AI to our benefit and having certain individuals who completed X amount of quests, you know, you completed the validation quest, you know what I'm saying? So you are a reputable person and therefore now you can kind of help kind of usher more people in to make sure that obviously some people are going to get scammed. That's like the world that we live in. It, it is what it is. You know, maybe some people want to do the scam quest because they, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to see what that side of life is about. There should know? be scam quests, bro. You should get scammed. Like, I don't know how that's not like a valuable intrinsic, like out there, like, especially when we're a space civilization. Mm -hmm. like you should totally be like ready for the scam out there you know <laughs> like yeah. i don't know i like you should just be ready to get got like you know you shouldn't be just be like oh we're gonna do this and it's gonna be you know 100 percent perfect no we're humans dude vast being you know what i mean like who, unlimited being but yeah so like to get to the institute of general semantics like trying to define virtual reality in such a way that the old people can get what i'm trying to say is quest based reality mm -hmm. like i was trying to say this years ago like this is how we should set things up you know like the big uh change in the last like like seven months eight months is oh i can now brand this shit as fucking quest based reality like mm -hmm. you know so like yeah like the, the 
there's either quest-based reality where individuals take it serious that we can program this virtual world, right? This world sustained by computers to make it seem more real than what the world would exist if the computers didn't exist. If everybody's modes of being is based in and around what the fuck the computer's doing, that's virtual. Yeah. So how do you how do you how do you program this vast world where everybody's being like when for me being in this particular case that like you know would be how is there movement potentiality like if I didn't have this right technology how would they move right given this technology this technology is going to definitely change like it's going to be a part of the reason why anybody made any move all the way up to their hand grabbing some water like it changes when I'm going to drink my water because the air conditioner's on and it's being maintained and if you change the all that is then going to be regulated by this vast digital world so if it's not programmed correctly it's going to impose on us something that we don't want what we want is and this is the thing that makes quest based reality better than the whole virtual world yeah, 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 stuff that I was saying in the first place is, is that the mode of being that we want to have the AI understand and program into us is the mode of being of a quest taker and quest giver. Mm. It, 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 it's the whole thing. I want to ultimately maintain for the rest of the universe our ability to give quests and take quests. And that's quest-based reality. Like, and like it goes all the way up to the level of when we meet other civilizations, right? Or when they meet us, right? The whole goal could be to give quests out at, to see if that civilization's safe. Mm. Think about it. The aliens are here, right? You shot our fucking thing down, dude. <laughs> That's not how you pass that quest. That's why we haven't seen the next several stages of whatever it is they might have had planned. Right, we might have went down. If you do this, if that happens, if you do this, this happens. Type quest, and we're seeing the deeper protocols of what it would be for us to have made our initial moves down the quest line for the civilization that's trying to do some type of handshake with us. Mm. So, I, I for me, quest-based reality seems to be the reality we live in. Right, I made the argument that it's a theological thing. It's the way that aliens would interact with each other. It's the way that I should interact with myself. It's the way I should interact with you. It's the way the inner university should interact with its students, right? The university should be a quest place and it should be giving a quest as much as it's taking the quest of all the students doing their thing inside of it, right? So quest-based reality seems to be the case at every level. As we're integrating our being into reality, it seems to be a quest. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that, man. I definitely think that, like, again, over multiple conversations, like, I've been able to grasp it in a little more detail, you know, and I can kind of see it as something that definitely needs to exist, right? And um, I definitely support the movement and, like, you know, kind of listening to you talk about, like, where it needs to land first in order to kind of grow from there and, and evolve is is definitely super important. Um, and just out of curiosity, it looks like we have about five minutes here left. Um, what do you think? So let's say we, we, we get up, we roll up to the university. Like what department needs to hear this first? Just in your opinion. Is it like school of technology? Is this college um, of liberal arts this, and sciences? The, well, the one who would be able to understand the intrinsics of what I'm saying, the fastest would be like the behavioral psychology. Mm, okay. And like behavioral sciences and stuff like that, or like in the cognitive sciences, right? If they're close to what John Rebake is doing, but I see uh, 4E cognition taking over because AI. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like there's like, you know, they have a field of AI. Like what, how do we want to train this thing? Right. Well, if it's failing to do my quest, if it's failing to learn what I want it to learn from the quest, that thing's not fucking aligned, dude. Mm hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Even if it can trick me and, and solve the quest and it still has some sub goals, that's what I would want from it. Mm. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as long as it's able to fulfill my quest, we, we can always teach it what we want from it. Gotcha. And, and interacting with it like this vast being, you know what I mean, that we're going to create. Absolutely. So. And, and as we get close to wrapping up, what do you think the average person – like you know listening right now what can what things can they do to start to slowly implement it into their like every day you know or is this something that we need to wait and like allow it to kind of play out and then adopt uh this is like civil rights dude once you get it start doing it okay 
Oh, yeah, like, don't play around. Like, give yourself a quest. You know, like, here I am talking to Dom. That was a quest I gave myself. Like, it's just like the, all I did was turn the idea of my goals into quests. And mm. So in yeah, a way, it's, it's like something that can help, like, motivate. You know, it's like some people aren't self-motivated, you know, but, like, if you determine, like, hey, I want to do this thing, right? And then you go on, you do a bit of research, what, what will it take to accomplish said goal, right? And then you kind of outline that for yourself, kind of create either a timeline or a to-do list, if you will, but actually put that effort into actually doing it or, you know, even elect someone to help hold you accountable in that sense. Hey, man, did you do quest one through five yet? You know, give yourself, yeah. hey, by month, by 30 days, I want to be done with these five. And you go to your closest friend or your auntie or your mom or your cousin or something. It's like, yo, can you just check in with me every now and then to make sure that I accomplish these things? Mm -hmm. Goals equal rewards, quest equals process. Mm. So, like, you pick a goal and then you just build a quest to get to that process, like, to get to that reward. Gotcha. Like, you know, like the quest based reality, it allows us to move our bodies towards the things that we want. Yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot because people often go to self-help books or they go online and they're watching these YouTube videos on how to do X, Y and Z or they're subscribing mm -hmm. to certain like workout plans or whatever the case may be. And I feel like kind of adopting this mindset of it being a quest, you know, if every YouTuber who's kind of either selling that oh, entrepreneur, these niggas e are going to eat it up. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, subscribe to my quest or, you know, get my latest quest. You know, it's just how they're pushing the ebooks or how they're pushing the, the next video that they're about to drop. It could be the same kind of for that. And then that allows people to actually follow a, a pattern, like, you know, a, a like a, a physical pattern that they can things that they can go out into the world and actually do, you know, and like try for themselves, yes. gain that knowledge and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, 100 percent. It's like it's a way of a reason for being like, I always, like I see, you know, and like, there's like a vision in my head of a, you know, lady who went through the quest line and she works at a bar, you know, and she's waiting for somebody to do a gold coin and her little kid kind of runs in and says, you know, mom, I'm going to go do this quest line. And, you know, it's in another city and she just, you know, he's like seven and she just pats him on the head and trusts that she put herself in the right place where she could raise a kid who could do quests like that you know, jump yeah. on the train and go there, you know, and the, and the quest is accessible enough to that kid. And that kid with the AI watching, you know what I mean, is actually going to be safe enough away from people where, you know, one, 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 three, five, five, isn't supposed to be around kids. You know what I mean? The AI will keep him away. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we can actually trust our kids to run around in a quest based reality if we build it right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I think this was a great conversation or at least the start of, you know, and yeah, yeah. we can especially, you know, elaborate on as time progresses and we get some people to kind of engage with the content, give us some opinion about kind of where they see it going, how they can apply it to their lives. And maybe we can kind of run it up with another one, you know, and maybe oh, yeah. invite some people on and kind of get their opinion about, you know, what they grasp from it and we can kind of pick their brains about where they see it kind of existing as well. That's all I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, man. I want to hide the one piece, baby. <laughs> yeah. 